This video is sponsored by Skillshare. I've made some oopsies. I've made some videos about my oopsies. Sometimes I make the oopsie, the other times I'm just experiencing the oopsie. I recently did a video uh, called Buying a Corn Snake on Craigslist, which ended terribly, and that was a kind of a story time from my experience building Emerald Scales, which takes in and sells reptiles. You probably know what Emerald Scales is by now, but I co-created Emerald Scales in 2017. It launched in 2018, and this experience took place in 2019. So personally, for myself, and I think many other people that are trying to build something that makes money, the goal is that you can step away from it and it still exists and you still make money from it. Uh, another goal is that you can die and it'll continue to build and be a productive and useful resource. And both of those are goals for myself. And in late 2019, it really looked like that was gonna be a possibility. Now at this time, we still weren't profiting much. We were making very little money, but it looked like a system was coming together with a small team that could really continue to grow and develop and make some more money in the future while I don't have to be physically like overseeing and doing every single little thing here and there. The true test was gonna be can I go on a few night trip at the beach and do very little? I was still gonna work. I was expecting like three or four hours a day, which is, I mean, I'll take it, that's a lot less. And so I still have time to like enjoy the ocean. And uh, yeah, at first all was well, animals going in, animals coming out. I mix that up, animals come in, animals everywhere. And two Crestic Echoes sold around this time. Both owners were verified and confirmed. They just needed ship dates. And one went ahead and shipped off. They were super excited to receive it. And then the next day we received this email that said, so my boyfriend just received the gecko and it's not the one I bought. The one we just received has his tail and it's not even the same morph. So we just use Discord for everything. And so there's a Discord server with everyone that's just working on Emerald Scales. And so the customer support manager messaged one of our out of state partners at the time who shipped the Cresta Gecko and said, so the buyer of the female flame Dalmatian Cresta Gecko received the wrong one today. It looks like she might've received the other female Dalmatian flame Cresta Gecko. I don't know how we coincidentally had two female Dalmatian Flame Crusty Geckos at the same time, which both sold at the same time and were shipping the same week, but one was an adult without a tail and one was a juvenile with its tail. And these two were mixed up and the wrong one was sent. At this time, I didn't actually know what was going on. I hadn't been on and they were just handling it themselves just fine. The email uh, support, she responded and said, thanks so much for your patience. We're so sorry for sending you the wrong test to Gecko. We hope you will allow us to make this right and get this fixed. So uh, since they still had the shipping supplies, we were just gonna send them a label and they could ship it back. And then the day that they drop it off, we ship the correct Cres 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 yep to them. And then that crested gecko, once we make sure it's still all good, it can go to the appropriate buyer. The buyer responded and said, I wanna run a possibility by you. I feel really uneasy about shipping the gecko back so soon and putting it through the process of shipment multiple times. So if your buyer is unresponsive, I would like to keep both geckos. And as a compromise, I pay for the shipping of the other one. Unfortunately, the other buyer did still want the original crested gecko, understandably, but the partner was actually willing to drive and uh, swap the two geckos in person since the buyer really was not comfortable shipping, as they said. The buyer agreed, but said, I'm honestly kind of sad to see this gecko go. She's really wonderful. The owner is going to love her. Uh, tell them she likes Pangea's apricot mix and is very enthusiastic about the beer roaches. Unfortunately, the scheduling did not work out and so the drive wasn't able to happen, but the buyer actually ended up offering to drive to the partner, which was like super nice. It would have made things even easier. And this was really accommodating. But it was then at this point that I actually got sick at the beach and I was even less active. However, I received a call from my animal care manager who was involved in the conversation between the email manager and the out-of-state partner who filled me in on the next email that was received, which said, it has been three days since I've received a reply from you. For how significant of a screw up and overall mess this has been on your part, this is abysmally unacceptable. I've decided since I cannot trust Emerald Scales to fix this problem or even reply more than once per day if I'm lucky, I can't trust you with this gecko. I'll be keeping it and sorting this out with the other buyer is now on you. As much as I wanna be sorry for them not receiving the animal they paid for, well, that's not exactly my fault at this point. I will not be replying to any more communication from Emerald Scales. Since I don't know when I will even receive further communication, when I get home from work, I will be filing a claim for PayPal for the $25 I just sent you for shipping a frog. 
Uh, so basically they were also going to send us a tree frog that they could not keep. So yeah, we we're going to ship the gecko and they were going to rehome a tree frog through our process. This is what like surprised me the most. I can't believe it was only $25 to send us animals. When we first started out, we would pay people for their animals that they couldn't keep. And then it became free. And then we started charging like 20 bucks to help cover the label. So in 2019, it was $25. Uh, now it's about 225 uh, is what most people pay. So if I could go back, I would totally charge so much more. If no response or refund is received in that timely manner, I will also be filing a claim for the full amount of the gecko I did not receive since I didn't receive it and also sent the one a lower value. The only thing making me walk away from this without blasting you on social media is the fact that I am unironically over the moon thrilled with the gecko. She's exactly as described and I can assure you she's doing fantastic. She had a nice shed a few days ago and is as happy as a gecko can be. I honestly adore her and I will give her the best life that I can. But on your part, you guys should not be selling animals. <laughs> Since you have my address, I'm going to preemptively state that should someone show up to my apartment, authorities will be notified and a scene will be made. And before I continue this story, this video is sponsored by Skillshare. If you're interested in being self-employed, starting a business, or even being a full-time YouTuber, a membership to Skillshare certainly doesn't guarantee any of that, but it does give you the ability to accomplish real growth. And it's very common to joke about how making videos online is like the easiest job ever. But once you start, you realize just how many skills you really have to develop to be in this position. From MKBHD's YouTube success class to a recent class I took on naming your brand or product by Faye Brown, most classes are under an hour and broken into even shorter shorter lessons to fit any schedule or attention span. Personally, Skillshare has been an easy way to keep developing skills because the classes are not only easy to understand, but you can jump around and engage in useful discussions and Q&As directly with the teachers. They've got thousands of classes, not just about making money, but on animation, fine art, graphic design, music, and even just improving your productivity. It's all ad-free and the teachers are just there to teach and not sell you stuff along the way. And the first 1,000 of you to click the link below get a free trial of the premium membership so you can explore it yourself. If you're interested, definitely try it out. And if you enjoy it, members get unlimited access to thousands of classes. Back to the oopsie. Okay, let's. Um, I, I need to unpack this a little bit more. Uh, so it's been three days since I received a reply. Um, the biggest issue that Emerald Scales ran into almost immediately was too much demand, which is very ironic because when most people start like a small business out of their home, the problem almost always ends up being having too much inventory and nobody to sell it to. But in our case, we didn't do any marketing whatsoever. I just made YouTube videos on everything and that brought so much demand with so many people wanting to send us animals and so many people wanting to buy animals, but we just could not keep up. So Emerald Scales is known for very slow response time. It's pretty good now, um, but like in 2020, for example, the average time was about 10 days per email. That was when there were two people doing emails and we were about 200 emails behind at any given point because so many people, especially during 2020, wanted to send us animals. Uh, but this again was in 2019. It was the same issue though, because we were just growing so much uh, popularity and not at all enough resources. So, and honestly, <laughs> This was not really a priority. Since the gecko was safe and healthy and they were in agreement, it, it wasn't the number one thing. The top stuff at the time was uh, there were a lot of sick animals at this point. So my time was basically going into making sure that they like get to and from the vet and stuff and they're surviving the best they can. There were also, we were rehabilitating more animals at this time. We don't do it as much now, but people would send us animals and we would do local pickups with animals that could not be shipped. Uh, so this is where, th those are like the top two priorities. And then number three was basically this. So uh, yeah, it had been a few days, uh, but they didn't want to wait. But the funny thing about this is how they flipped from really angry to then super happy because they actually love the gecko and then angry again because they hate us. Also, they threatened to like, call the police if we, I mean, we wouldn't have gone to their house. So that was all read to me from uh, over the phone from my uh, animal care manager who was kind of relaying it for uh, the, uh, um, I'm so bad at, see, you can see how good I am at organizing multiple people and I can't even remember their titles. Animal care manager called me, relayed everything for the out-of-state partner and the email manager. Okay, I got it. So I responded, uh, <laughs> I said, apologies for the unfortunate mistake that was made with the order. I'm sad to see the correspondence took a negative turn. This is our first time delivering an incorrect animal and new measurements have made to ensure these errors do not happen again, uh, which I'll mention at the end. Please note, uh, any future orders placed through us or our other sellers will be declined. Thank you for understanding. So this last sentence, any future orders will be declined, 
is a sentence I never thought I would send. But at this point, I had sent it dozens of times. So basically what would happen is because we work kind of differently from other people that sell animals, if someone got declined, they would just buy another animal. And then we decline them and they buy another animal. And they want to send an animal, we decline them, it's too sick. They try to send another animal. So what I had to start doing was building a blacklist of people that we can't work with or don't want to work with. Uh, these were the kind of people that were buying a 10 inch turtle and wanted to put it in a 20 gallon tank or buying a ball python and a corn snake and wanting to keep it together or buying a male and female leopard gecko which clearly state that they cannot be bred and they want to breed them. So it's just stuff like that. Anything that we are not comfortable working with, we started building this blacklist and we'd notify them you will be declined because they kept placing these orders but if you buy an animal the quantity would go to zero and then we would have to manually go in cancel it refund it and update the uh, quantity so we would just flat out tell them stop ordering <laughs> we're not <laughs> you're blacklisted so i said the same thing to them because they kept changing the plan and then they got really upset and then threatened to call the police for no reason but then they responded. You know, I wasn't gonna reply, but I'm just blown away that you're barring me from all future transactions because I wanna keep the animal I was sent. Not that I have a burning desire to do future business with you, but I'm not the one who messed up here. Three days is ample time to give a single reply, and if you don't think so, you shouldn't be working with live animals. If this is the first time an incorrect animal was shipped, it's even stranger that no one was more on top of it. You're literally punishing me because I want to keep the animal I was sent. That's kind of ridiculous. It's also ridiculous that for three days, you and your team were too busy to respond, but you definitely found the time to type out a Harry Potter-sized novel in the PayPal notes to protect yourself. So what this is referring to is the other issue Emerald Scales ran into, and that is when people want to rehome an animal or purchase an animal, they think it's instant. The moment they order, they can send it, or receive their animal. But uh, buying an animal takes a few weeks to like verify them and stuff. And sending an animal, there's a wait list. And we try to be as clear about this wait list as possible, but some people still assume, once I pay, I get to send the animal. Uh, at the longest point, the wait list was about 10 months, uh, but at the shortest, it was like a month or so. So what would happen is they open a PayPal case, which is basically charging back your credit card and marking the order as fraudulent. Uh, my account, my PayPal account got locked because of these cases. So what my time actually ended up going to for a handful of months is just about two hours a day. I would just have to respond to these PayPal disputes. Uh, I have to be extremely thorough. I think it's a pretty silly process, but it's the best we got right now. So yeah, I would have to write like an essay per uh, PayPal case. It would take me about 15 to 20 minutes per case and I would have to do like three or four a day just to make sure my PayPal account doesn't get deleted. So yeah, that's that's where my time was going. So she didn't like my Harry Potter novel. <laughs> As a final note, you do not have my permission to create any content for YouTube that uses my name. I just thought it was funny that they could preemptively see, yep, this is gonna be a video. I, I, obviously, I, I always change the name. So the other buyer of the other Crested Gecko, uh, we just kind of filled them in on what happened and they understood and they took the other Crested Gecko and they were actually really happy with it, so. Uh, this all happened in 2019, but later in 2021, I realized I actually had another email thread with this person. I only realized this now because whenever people like post about Emerald Scales online or something, uh, people always send it to me because they want to like hear my opinion or whatever. And uh, there was a post online about an experience of someone receiving the wrong animal and they kind of told the story online. But I realized that the username is actually the same as the email address used for this email, which was a reply to a newsletter I sent out. But they signed up to the mailing list with their other email and they responded, you're charging over $200 for a normal leopard gecko? Can y'all explain, y'all, I've never said y'all before. Can y'all, <laughs> I can't say it, explain to me how you justify that sort of robbery? Uh, lots of people complain about prices. Conveniently, it's never the people that buy animals. Uh, sometimes I respond, sometimes I don't. Uh, I did respond to this one though. I said, I had to raise the prices due to expenses. In 2020, I spent around 7,000 per month on Emerald Scales. This is mainly due to working with animals in such diverse conditions, many needing rehabilitation or a few years of care with us. Uh, at the moment, we make about $50 per month profit. <laughs> she responded again saying, it sounds like you weren't very prepared for running your rescue if you need to rescue people on the cost of very basic and common animals to cover expenses. Laughing emoji. Don't you drive a Tesla and make money from both YouTube and Patreon? I don't feel bad for you. You're ripping people off. I, I still don't really get the, why, what the point of that email was or the point that they're trying to make. 
so that was the experience um and not really any big more of, of the story but i do have some takeaways uh there were two big ones from this the first is that i agree micromanaging is bad some people say i'm a micromanager others say i do not uh, I, I do think micromanaging hurts a project however not being able to oversee everything is just a really big risk with emerald scales uh, we need physical space for the animals it started just in a bedroom and then i ended up renting a home for it uh, and throughout this process we would always run out of space so we started working with people who could kind of specialize with certain animals who weren't necessarily out of state but just under a different roof basically so we would interview these people and get to know them really well uh, get to trust them and then they would kind of get animals funneled to them when we were out of space i think we had four different people doing this throughout the couple years that we did and uh usually they would keep like five to 20 animals themselves and they would do everything we did and then we would give them a cut of the money they'd take them in for us and they would send them off and care for them and take the pictures and we'd post them on the site and market them uh, so it was kind of a win-win but it was just so hard to manage because we couldn't physically be there. I couldn't physically see what was going on. I couldn't physically make sure that things were going correctly. And every single experience that we had had different problems. And naturally people are gonna make mistakes, but if there's like four people who all occasionally make mistakes, that can be like dozens of mistakes building up, which can be pretty serious. I think I'll talk about the other experiences in the future, but with the, the person that sent the wrong Cresta Gecko, is the best person that we've worked with in regards to the partners. It was just a, I mean, it was an accident that I could probably make too. And everything else they did was great, but this one obviously happened. And it's just so hard if you can't oversee everything. So I, what, yeah, what I took away is don't micromanage, but also don't just let things happen without you being able to see them. The second big takeaway, which I think is kind of more valuable in this scenario, is just don't work with clients that you don't like. I think pretty much everyone knows you shouldn't work with companies you don't like. If you don't like your phone provider, you get a different phone provider. If you don't like the person that changes your oil in your car, you go to a different place. But it's not as often talked about not working with clients you don't like, especially when people hear the customer's always right, which is kind of just like, a, I mean, I don't know if people actually believe that, but it's a pretty old saying, I guess. But something that we always tried to do, and this kind of cemented it for me, is like, yeah, we shouldn't work with people that we don't like. Um, and it, it can be hard to say to a client, we don't want to work with you. Here's your money back. Don't order from us again. It's awkward and it's pretty uncomfortable, but it's also very valuable. And I'm not just saying someone I have a personal grudge against because I don't like their profile picture or they said something kind of snarky, but I mean people that legitimately, we just don't get along and we don't agree. We don't see eye to eye and we just don't like the experience. Uh, if they're disrespectful, if they're mean, if they're angry, if they're very impatient, if they don't listen, if they're very confusing, just any sort of reason, it just kind of benefits everyone if you just cut the cord and end the relationship. But on the positive side of this, it also gives you more time to build stronger relationships with the clients that you really do like. Because what I really value are those people that buy an animal, the experience is great. They come back and buy another animal and that's another great experience and i want those people to keep coming back and kind of be like preferred keepers almost so recently i've been thinking of doing some sort of like incentive for people that we just really enjoy working with the respectful patient polite helpful um, friendly and those that just see eye to eye that agree with us that like what we do just that sort of thing and really put more time into those and yeah, incentivize them to keep working with us because it's mutually beneficial. So it's two-sided there. And um, uh, yeah, those are the two big takeaways from this. So ultimately, luckily the Cresta Gecko did end up in a home that was ready for a Cresta Gecko. It wasn't like they ended up with a reticulated python instead of a Cresta Gecko and then kept it. Um, so unfortunately, the original plan didn't go as planned and we could not do the Gecko swap, but that sounds like Gecko swap. I don't like that term. I'm not gonna say gecko swap again, but it could have been worse. So that was that experience. And thanks again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Um, yeah, if you want to check them out, the first 1000 of you get a premium membership. I definitely recommend it, but that's it for this story. You can check out some of the others. I'll link a few below, but I've, I've got a lot of um, stuff like on this topic kind of on the channel. So, and if you want more, uh, let me know in the comments so I get an idea of how many of you are interested in future oopsies or just other experiences. 
but that's it. Thanks for watching. I'm Alex, and thanks for watching.